hello friends last we last week we stopped from uh, call, using invoking the p invokes and using those p invokes to get the modules base address so let me go ahead and open my base uh, uh, our testing program here so it's in my desktop so so we use define window uh, and we use this one and <coughs> sorry we use uh, main window of this uh, the window name is the main so we use the, that and we use find window calls and open in the process and from that we received the module base address right so today we are going to implement the write process memory and read process memory functions so the most important function from these uh, those two functions are the read process memory that is because we have to uh, read the pointer values and we have to go through the pointers to pointers to pointers sometimes we have to get the value so you if you have multiple pointers so let's say 10 pointers you have to go deep uh, 10 levels so in order to do that we need the read process memory functions also the read process memory function is also important when we checking a null pointer so for example uh, let's say your game has some pointer and uh, that you found your base address and from that you go deep let's say level three pointer so you go three levels and your last pointer uh, is not yet created in the game so let's uh, that that can happen when you start the trainer but you your level is yet loading and the situations like that your pointer may get null so we have to check uh, before writing the pointer values so value to a pointer we must check whether that pointer is a null pointer or not so uh, today in this video this video we are going to discuss the read process memory and we actually write the read process memory and write process memory functions and also we are going to implement the algorithm uh, to go multiple pointers so we are going to go deep to the multiple pointers and we also we are going to check whether the pointer is null or not all right so in order to uh, Im import the write me process memory and read process memory functions so let's head to pinvoke.net uh, net and from that let's import the uh, read process memory and write process memory function so i'm going to import these function those one those functions right here so let's go to p invoke and let's grab those functions all right so p invoke so so here's our p invoke so i'm going for write process memory <clears throat> so uh, we also need this one so write process memory is in kernel 32 so I'm going for this one so we need the C sharp signature so there are two signatures uh, let's see what's the difference so we both all right so this one has a byte a buffer whereas this one has the object as the buffer so byte buffer is the easy one in this instance so let's go and grab this version and copy it to our visual studio code so let's just get this to one line here so as I stated earlier, we all uh, these these functions requires INTPTRs 
so the base as for the base address and the process handle all are INTPTRs also the number of bytes written also INTPTRs but it's a uh, out INTPTR so we are uh, receiving a value from there all right so let's grab the other function that is read process memory so let me grab that so all right c sharp we have multiple signatures again so this is the object version so what's the difference between these two all right this is intptr buffer so let's get this one because we are using a byte buffers right okay let me modify it to one line here right now we have read process memory and write process memory functions now we can directly use those functions so uh, for this one uh, we need a memory location to write all right or either read or write we need a memory location right so we must have some way uh, to tell our trainer that this is a pointer this is a static address and this is a multiple pointer all right so we are going to have some sort of a convention within this program uh, to state whether this is a static address this is a pointer or this is a multiple pointer so in order to uh, do that let's follow this convention all right so uh, this is the convention that I'm going to follow. Let's uh, get the notepad and uh, write down so we can use it as our future reference here. All right. If uh, the memory address written as like this, so let's say all uh, all our memory, all memory addresses are in hexadecimal. So so if my memory address is written like that, this one this way, so 16f, let's say 32 bit address. So I have two and three and four. So this is four byte means 32 bit. If I write memory address like this, this represents a static memory address. That means the value directly in this static address. All right. So this is static and the value is in is directly in this address or so no more pointer scanning or going through the pointers. But if I write like this and comma zero, I will explain why we need a zero offset. This means we need to get the pointer. Read. So basically this means read the value in 16 F2 A89 and add the offset 0 and you add this that offset you get the value so basically it says read the value or rather read the address in the content of this address and add the offset followed by comma and get the value all right so this is our memory convention all right now there is another type that we are going to do but uh, that will be in a later discussion or rather 
let's go let's do that in next our final video that means next video is going to be our final video so we are finishing off everything and we complete the trainer so uh, so right now we are going to follow these two conventions so if we have multiple pointers those will be denoted as follow so if this uh, uh, written as like this 8 9 and 0 2 so like this offset so that means I have to first read this at this offset and get the value and that also a pointer read from that at this offset and get value and it is also a pointer and get this offset and so on so on and you go until you reach this uh, last offset so once you have this last offset uh, you have the final value of the uh, variable that you are in interest so we need some helper functions right so basically we need some helper functions to achieve this so now before we writing any helper functions let's try our read process memory and write process memory are working so first let's try write process memory so here uh, in this uh, trainer we are going to support my, uh, a few types of writing here all right so we are going to support writing 32-bit integers floats and double values all right so we have uh, many 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 data types but uh, in this trainer uh, we are going to write those uh, data types that I have discussed so we you can write other very uh, other values uh, so that will be your homework all right so uh, in order to do that i'm going for uh, some uh, methods for this all right so basically i'm going to write the writing functions all right so first i am going for method overloading so i'm going to uh, declare the following memory method so we can use them later so that will be our so these are these are public methods so i'm going to write public this is void because we are writing we are not getting anything write to mem that means write to memory so we need a memory address so the memory address will be our convention that we discussed so our input will be something like this right so uh, uh, one important thing is this is 32 bit memory address but here so when we are using this function we are actually passing the offset from from the base all right so the final base will be calculated by adding this to our offset all right so uh, i'm going to write this this is a string and string uh, operand okay string so memory op that means memory operand sorry and uh let's start try with double so i'm going to use double so if you don't get anything just write in the comment section all right i will uh, clarify it for you so this is my first write process memory uh, not the write process memory write function all right now nothing here don't worry about this so my second one will be we are uh, we should be able to write bytes all right so my so let's so these are my two regions here so these writing public methods right so now here I'm going to add another one this still we need memory operand and this will be our byte so we will be able to write one byte values too right the next one is integer we should 
have the capability to write integers. So let me copy this function and just change this to int. All right. Next one will be double and so we have double. All right. So we need a final function that is float. All right. So this will be our float. So this is going to be float. Right. Okay. Now, now we need to implement the actual writing function. Okay. So before we implement the actual writing functions, we need to implement some uh, helper methods here. All right. One such helper method is finding the actual location from this given operand. All right. So we should be able to find the final address or the address where the value actual value resides from this given operand. Then we are going to write some. Uh, we are going to get the input parameter string that is the memory operand all right so i'm going to write so this is my private method this will be valid that is because this method uh, don't need to be exposed to output all right so i'm going to return intptr here all right that is find real memory location all right So this will be like like this. Let's continue on implementing this one. All right. Okay. So I'm going to declare a variable here. So this is my return value. So this is the one that I'm going to return all right okay now let's check with our operand all right so let's check whether our operand contains these square brace if one it's it, if it brings square brace so basically it starts with square brace and uh, for the validity let's check whether it contains the uh, closing square brace if that is true that means start with open curly square so square brace and it also contains the closed square brace that means that is this is a point all right so let's start by uh, checking whether this one starts with the sorry starts with the open curly brace all right and it should also contains the closing curly, uh, sorry, not curly brace, square brace. All right. If this is the, if this condition is true, that means this one is true. This is a pointer. Let's write down some note here. This is a pointer. All right. So if this is a pointer then we have another two possibilities all right so whether this one is just a pointer with zero offset or multiple offset anyway uh, we should uh, whether uh, if this is a level one pointer with uh, no offset that means we must pass zero because uh, offset can be there or cannot be there so if there is no offset we can just pass zero because we can add the offset of zero Otherwise, we can add the offset of uh, the given value. All right. So now we are going to find number of offsets. All right. So after the close uh, square brace, we start the offsets by adding commas. All right. So here, adding commas, we are starting offset. So we are going to uh, get the values to our uh, this variable here so i'm going to split by 
is parked right so that means uh, this one breaks from this character so the left side will be the point actual address the right side will be the uh, comma separated including first comma comma separated uh, offsets all right so now i need the pointer value so i have pointer base all right let's say base address okay this is our base address so in this one zero okay the left side is contains a pointer and it also has this opening square bridge so i'm going to skip this by using substring from the uh, skipping the first address all right so i'm going to convert this to a actual pointer because now this is a uh, string okay so let's use string str base address so i'm going to convert it to actual pointer this is our base pointer so i'm going to pass this one all right str base address now this string as you, i stated earlier uses hex now this one also converted from the hex so we must tell that uiat32 parser to treat the input string as hex so i'm going to use system dot globalization number styles and that is will be hexadecimal or hex number right right now now this one converted to uh, for actual uh, uh, pointer right now there is no string here all right now we are going to convert it to intptr so that is going to be our that means actual pointer that means uh, now this is uint32 now because we cannot access memory from the, from this one so wow be now So this is our integer pointer, all right. Okay, now this is our, now we can directly access memory by using this pointer, all right. Now, but this is a offset, all right. So this is offset. So if we are going to try to write this memory addresses, then our program will be crashed or either it won't write anything, all right. Now, we are going to calculate the uh, offset but can we calculate offset offset address all right now we have offset follow after comma but this is also offset all right now we cannot add offset to offset we need to find the actual address here okay so that means uh, base address plus this point all right now i'm going to use the same variable here so that is known as base pointer all right will be now it is equal to let's so intptr has a method to add or subtract so so i'm going to add all right so last week we save this as a modules base address as a global variable so we can directly use that now here okay so this one all right plus sorry not plus offset now this is the pointer offset is this value so base pointers itself all right so it's very oh 
you can use this one also base point address all right so this is ui anterior too so you can use this one also let's use that one that will be more convenient than otherwise this one get confused so my, my final point will be we can use that all right so this is we have to convert this to int rather let's go for let's remove this one right i believe and just remove this now we have this base point right so uh let's check all right whether this one actually get to our final address all right so uh for now i am going to use this as public so we are in for testing purposes we are going to use this as a public so we can call that by our c sharp application so uh, in order to get the memory address let me open the cheat engine uh, from that we get our memory address so i'm going to open this right so clr into mem okay all right i have to open main window here all right yes 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 let's get this okay here i have one pointer here so this is uh 163f8 all right so this is the address that i'm going to write now remember this is a pointer and this is its offset all right so in my c sharp application okay i'm going to write c dot find real memory address so my string operand will be something like this comma zero all right so let's debug this one and go through lines one by one so here it asks for return address so i'm just going to return null here so return intptr dot zero okay that means <laughs> now all right now uh, let me put a breakpoint here okay so let's start the debugging process okay all right now uh, the method hit so let me go through so this is my memory operand okay now this is starts with so this one should be true okay that means this now this is uh, this condition we are inside this condition so this is will be our splitting so after the so left uh, right to the split we have this offset with the first comma and to the left we have the offset so i'm going the base address as this one so this is the base address so i'm going to turn it to 32 bit integer okay so let me all right that let's right click and us hexadecimal so as you can see now this is converted to hexadecimal <laughs> everything is going to be fine now we have the pointer now i'm going to add this one and we have the module address like this to be zero four zeros and this one so let's see all right our final pointer in this instance is 0026 sorry 2c uh 63 f8 all right let's compare all right so let's uh, get these two copy so this is the actual value here okay we have to add the point so we have if we can get the read process memory we can get that okay All right, now this is the address, right, right? So the address, so if we read the value here, we get this one. So as I mentioned, we have to use a read process memory to get this value, but uh, the address, the actual address that is re that it is resolved to is this one. So two six, sorry, two C six three F eight. 
here also sorry this one 263F8 check again 263F8 now we have found our first uh, sorry our base uh, this is fine point now we can use this pointer to actually use write process memory and read process memory functions all right now but yet we didn't finish uh, this method so we have to tackle the other conditions too all right okay so so let me complete this uh, other conditions too all right so here now if uh, this single offset like this so this is our uh, case but now here we didn't add the offset but if the offset is zero we are lucky this work but if the offset is not zero then we are going into problem all right remember the offsets are in the left of this uh, variable all right so here to the left or sorry to the right uh, we have the offsets okay now we are going to use some uh, recursiveness here so because we are going to deep in deep in deep to the pointers all right so we are uh, the for so for that recursive function is the best way all right so here we need uh, a separate uh, method here from here from this is the fine real memory location we need a separate method to read all right to read the memory location for this address all right so let's implement that later so let come let's uh, add a comment there and after that let's implement that one all right so see if our offsets I'll close base all right its length is one right so we must get the final address all right now let's get the final address should be here should be all right now we get a uh, call uh, call that call for that method let's right now okay now if that's not the case that means we have more than one <laughs> i'm going to use offsets as uh, integer where uh, integer array all right so i'm going to convert this uh, offset all offset from string array or rather comma separated strings so sorry comma separated values to i integer array so in dot net we can easily do that all right so i'm going to use offsets by using link we can do this so i have uh, this one so offsets after close brace so from first i have this one so from that i'm going to do a split by comma so now i have strings which splitted by using comma all right so here i'm going to skip the first one that is because our string looks like this so here i have like something like this all right so if the first so the zeroth one is this okay so if we are going to convert this to integer then we, this our program will throw a exception all right so therefore i'm going to skip the first one so skip one element and select that means i'm going to convert now this every other thing into integer all right so offset goes to convert dot integer 32 again ofs that means this one fills with one string offset all right now it's converted all right but we have to convert this to array all right now i forgot one thing these offsets are also in hexadecimal so 
I'm going to use this one from base is going to be 16 all right so that is our base so I need to convert this to array here okay so I'm going to convert it to two array so this will be our integer array okay right so let's see all right so this is integer array now with this one call for method x all right this is the same recursive method as calling here this one uses read process memory to get the uh, actual values all right so this will be our that will be our recursive method now let's uh, before that let's complete this method first and let's uh, write implement that other method all right so now uh, if this contains uh, if this value like this so we have open curly oh sorry open and close square brace we know that this is a pointer all right but remember we discuss now we covered this case so this is the multiple case now we have this case all right we didn't cover this one now let's in else rule let's cover that case all right so here is the first two cases sorry second and third cases so this is the last case that means first case now right okay so here now this is our this is our base pointer all right that is that means we have sorry, not the base pointer that is base static address so we have the static address we don't have any pointer types and that's is that a raw pointer all right so here in else that uh, that is that will be just this address okay that means we are going to add uh, the module address and this address and that's it uh, that is because it is the static address okay so I'm just going to copy this address notice this one this thing will be uh, going to be changed here so I'm going to use this variable so this is that is the I'm going to return here that is one so I'm going to return this one okay so this will be same mass. So so I'm going to add this. Okay, so I get the INTPTR. So my base point is modules base address. Okay. So let me get it from here. and now next one now our memory operand we are going to get this value from memory operand Remember now memory operand in this case it looks like this but you know it's a offset so I'm going to simply convert the memory operand to hexadecimal all right now this is not going to be offset so this is mem right now this is my final pointer i'm going to return this now we cannot return like this because in previous one we are going to assign we must assign all right so these two cases we still don't have the value all right so here for now i'm going to all right now this case will be covered so let's see whether we actually have that kind of case all right we have this one i believe so this is a static one all right so let's see all right whether we can get this one by passing this value all right so i don't need any of these i just need this all right let me close so in order to shut the compiler i'm going to use final pointer to null all right so here here i initialized it okay now let's see whether we can achieve that 
All right, so here I have this memory. Uh, that means 163 F0, like this one. All right, 163 F0. I should get, when I return in from this function, I should get 2C63 F0. That means adding those two. So, so this uh, condition is going to be false. Now I have ju jumped to this one. So let's see. Again, now we can see that address is same. 2C63 F0. 2C63 F0. 2C63 F0. Now, that case works. Now, what about these two cases? All right, so I have a. Let me correct this, I believe. Let's see. See, now it's worked. So, this is our multiple pointer. So, we can get this one as our multiple pointer. So, this one will be base pointer comma 4 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 comma 0. Okay. Now let's see whether we can change that. Right, the value is 34, 34. Now it's working properly. So let me reset it. Alright. Now. Now let me save this. I'm going to replace. Okay, no problem with the replacement. Right. Now let's cover the offset cases and the pointer case. <laughs> now let's uh, before that let's implement this method. All right, this recursive method. Right now let's let me stop this one. So from here, I'm going to. Uh, write uh, this records to method all right now here we should return a point all right so we should return a pointer so our return type is so this will be a private method so uh, we can use this as a private because this method calls this method and this is private public for now so we can test this method too all right now I'm going to use intptr as a return type so find final pointer all right so let's i need the base and i accept the integer array as the offset all right so let me okay right now <laughs> Uh, now we are going to use read process memory function. Uh, therefore, we are going to allocate some sizes. So before do anything, let's use read process memory. Let's see. Now we need the process handle. Obviously, we have the process handle. So let's write down the things we have. What is the handle? All right, this is the handle. Okay, process handle. All right. Oh, right, now, now we need the base address. So the base address is the base pointer in this case. Okay. Now we need a buffer and the size of the buffer. Right now, here we are using a pointer. All right, we are finding a pointer and we are returning a pointer. Now, since we are developing a 32-bit version of this trainer, the pointer size will always be 4, right? But we are not going to hard port 4 here. So we are what we are going to do is let's allocate the buffer here. Or oh, let's use the var. Alright, var. That is equals to new byte. Now size of the INTPTR, all right? So we can use the buffer here, all right? So the size is same as uh, INTPTR size, so that means four. So I'm going to use the INTPTR dot size here, okay? 
Now I need another variable here. Okay. So I'm going to declare that variable right here because since this is an out variable, we can declare this right here. So I'm going to use out int ptr total array. All right, how much rate, how much memory? So how much byte this rate? All right, so I have no problems with my read process memory. Okay. Now, now let's do the following. All right. Now I want to, now we know this is also the stuff we read to this bar buffer. It's also a pointer. That means it's a memory address. All right. No matter what, this function returns a memory address. So this one also a memory address. So we must convert this buffer to memory address. So for that, so it's a pointer. So I'm going to use another variable. So that will be our pointer. We are, that will be another INTBTR. Okay. Now the value is, value is in this buffer. So for that, I'm going to use bit converter. So we have to convert the bytes here. So this is u2 uint32 or int32. You can use anything. Now we are going to use buffer. The start index is zero because we are going to convert from the beginning. All right. Now here we have the point. All right. Now since we are going to the recursive case here, we are going to get uh, one element from this array and we call this function again by reducing one element from this array. So let me show you how to do it. All right. Now we are going to write the stopping case here. Okay. So before that, let's get our point offset. We get one offset here. You may be wondering why we get one offset because we have multiple offsets. That is because when we are calling this function recursively, the zeroth offset will always going to be the new offset. All right. Uh, so let me show you when uh, what I mean by that. All right. So uh, let's see now. Before uh, now, uh, get uh, let's now first let's calculate this offset. So. Offset can be either plus offset, so that means EBP plus plus or plus offset or minus EBP minus ESP minus. So let's see whether the offset is plus or minus. So if the offset value is less than zero, that means we have a negative offset. So offset, I'm going to uh, get the absolute value. Of the offset, all right. Now, our pointer will be subtracted so this one will be our pointer, okay. Subtracted, subtracted from this offset, all right. Else, we simply add it, all right. Again, pointer right I'm not sure you can omit these two and simply put uh, add with minus but I'm not sure that all right you may be able to do it but I'm not sure that's why I use the subtract with just to be safe all right now let's write the stopping case of the recursive function all right the stopping case is the length of these offset is going to be one all right so the length of the offset is one means uh, 
the calculation of the offset already happened in this line so the point whether is a plus offset or minus offset that calculation already happened in this one and after that you have only one value here okay so there is no more to go so we return this all right so let me show you why i uh, select one rather than zero all right so so let's let's go okay first let's see what happened if we use zero all right now if you use zero this is the most likely stopping case so i'm just going to return the pointer that i have found because now i have uh, moved uh, changed the pointer with the offset from these lines all right so else i'm going to call the recursively All recursively here so I'm going to return again call the recursive function now here is the actual pop-up happens so I'm going to use a right I'm going to use the offset so I have offsets here so I'm going to pop the first one so I'm going to skip the first that means we are going to remove the very first element and convert this one to again array now i go here all right now let's what let's need just dry run here let's see what happen if we use zero okay now I assume i have two two uh, length of two array okay now here with this i calculate right now two now since we have uh, this is not true now because we have two elements I call this one recursively so I have one here now let's write in notepad here so let me delete everything here so I have I say this one one two all right so here first run I have looks like we can call it right I have four four now if the now my pointer this offset is going to be two all right so this is my pointer so next line I have if this one is not less than zero that because the two is not less than zero now I'm going to add four four plus two is four six again I have two uh, so my array is uh, two comma one okay, let me put my array here also so this is the offset so this is my array here now in this line this one going to be false because I have two elements so I pop one element from here and call back all right so my next recursive call will be 46 something like this now again I process these lines okay so I read process memory I get the read process memory value and every so from the read process memory I have let's see let's say I get now my actual value is 6 I have 1 now it is 47 all right now here 46 now I have 1 Again, I have one. Now this is forty-seven. I have. I am calling with this one. With nothing. No pointers. All right. Now I am going to call with this one. Now I have forty-seven. All right. With nothing here. All right. Let's. No. Just no. Now the, the problem happens is uh, now that was our final value right and if we try to add uh, process these lines we get a problem that is because we are we are returning a point but with the final value after we add, add the value sorry after we process the final int 
also and if we try to call again so if this is zero we are going to remove that one also that means last element and if we call this one now we have the pointer to the final value now if we do the read process maybe we get the actual value it is not a pointer it is the actual value maybe integer or float or whatever all right now we are not returning a pointer rather we are returning a value so this function is not generate to return a value so if this function generate uh, implement to return a value then we cannot use one of these cases all right uh, so this function is going to be a problem so this says that find real memory location so we, we are not dealing with the value here we are going to check the memory location all right so this method is only concerned on finding memory pointers so going through the memory pointers not to actual value so therefore i'm going to increase this to one because if we put zero then this one reads the that one and this one reads the final value the final point and get the essence get the actual value so that will be problematic all right now so so now that is done now seems now this is our recursive function all right so now let's fill these two and let's see whether our recursive function actually work right now here let's fill this one so if this is the case so if we get just square braces bracket so square brace so our final point will be then just go for find final pointer all right and then let's pass the pass the pointer here all right so so base pointer it's gonna be a base pointer right and this request for offset so therefore going to use this one most of the time this case won't work that is because we are already sending the uh, offset one single offset as and for added added with zero all right so let's check this one works and our final one will be This is also our final pointer, all right? Final point is again find final pointer. Now I still can use the base pointer, right? Oops. Base pointer. Now I can use these offsets, all right? Okay. Now, being this one as a debug, let's see whether our one actually works okay so i can use so sorry so if i go try this one now so since this is a pointer i'm going to use a pointer notation all right i should go for i should add this comma zero here Okay. Now let's see. So here I have one. So I got the final pointer four five one eight b eight. So four five one eight b eight. Let's see. Four five one eight b eight. So this is four five one eight b eight. Looks like the pointer finding the pointer works. All right now that's the base one now let's see this point whether this one actually get its value so i believe we should get this value but let's see all right now here i can change this one 
so this will be FC all right now so 16 3 FC 16 3 FC plus 4 how many fours 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 fours and 1 0 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 fours and 1 0 all right let's see whether we can find the point with this one too all right okay we receive the point uh, pointer now 451 8a8 451 8a8 451 8a8 looks like our recursive function success now it's time to read the actual content here and write it all right now before that let's complete these functions all right now as we recall we need a byte array to write to write process memory function so the write process memory function receive uh, needs a byte array all right so we need something some other helper function to convert this is this value these values all right into byte array so let's uh, complete that function right now all right so let's uh, let's start this as uh, this will be our base function so we can use it as a private one all right so, so i'm going to use private this will be a void because we are going to write So this again the string memory operand we must get this as memory operand and now this changes to byte bytes all right right now first we need to get the final pointer by using the memory operand so wa final pointer is find real memory location now this is memop right now this one calls to this one and this one validates everything and calls to this recursive location recursive function and you will get this final point all right now now we are going to write write process memory now we are going to write write process memory and we have the p handle process handle the base address is the final pointer now we are going to write the bytes that why that we received from this met uh, as variable and length of the bytes all right now i'm going to you know out intptr by its written okay so just we just use if so by its written two we should get the value so that means if this success we should write the full length amount of these bytes if that the case we have success one otherwise we are failed so if the write process memory function written all the bytes in this ones the byte written value of the byte written will be equal to length of this byte so if it's not the case so let's just write error to the console okay all right 
So this is it. Now let's fill this function. All right. Now we should convert these uh, integer float values to bytes here. Okay. So uh, our first method here is let's, okay. Uh, it's a double one. All right. We can use the bit converter here. All right. So everything is going to be bit converter. So the bit converter has everything. Okay. So var bytes so equals bit converter dot get bytes. You see the you see the all ordered one has everything. Okay. So I'm just simply pass the value. All right. Now from that I'm going to call right mem bytes. So I pass the mem op and the bytes. All right. Okay. So this go is going to be same for everything. Just copy and paste. Okay, now writing part is completed. Now let me change this to private. Okay, now here we will get this get an error. Now instead of find real memory location, we are going to use write to mem. All right, so our memory operand will be like this. So we have multiple values. So I'm uh, so this is just integer. So I'm going to use let's see int and let's write 99. If everything success, okay. If everything is going to be a success one, we should see this value. I believe this is the one. Oh no, let's. All right, this is the one. This value should get 91. All right. All right, let's see. So let me have a breakpoint. So here, final point uh, received. Here it receives the final one. So now we are in write mem bytes. So we written. Let's see. All right, number of byte written is four. Okay, so. Integer is also 32 bit, that means 4 bytes. We didn't have any problem. Let's continue here. And let's see. All right. We have the value of 99. So we successfully written this process memory. So now let's do final thing that is uh, check whether this uh, pointer is whether this pointer is null or not and then write to the process memory so if this is null the write process memory is going to be skipped okay if this is not null uh, we are going to write this all right so in order to compensate everything what we are going to do is uh, we write a general um, method that means we write the method generically so we can use it to check the whether the pointer is getting nulls all right and also we can read the memory values all right so let's do that right now now let's uh, complete uh, the reading uh, methods now so in order to do that, we are going to use the reading methods. Okay. Now, same like above, so same like before, we are going to read bytes, integers, doubles, and float in this one. All right. Now I'm going to minimize this region here. Okay. Now reading public methods. So I have All right. 
now let's use uh, so let's try from here public float why I use the question mark let me explain so if the pointer is null, that the pointer that we are going to read is get uh, is got null, the final pointer is null, then we can simply nullify this return only. So we simply can return null. Alright. So let's so see I can return null with this. Alright. But if I remove this question mark notice I cannot return null okay here so let me have the question mark okay I'm just not going to return null here if this is not null so again so let me let us let's write the other stuff too so we should have something to read actual alright so I'm going to return value so this is my right okay before that let's uh, implement the actual reading function all right so the actual reading function so that will be our private method okay so private so we sh we are going to return array of bytes and the caller must convert back to its form so let's uh, so assume the caller is this function all right so this function must convert the bytes that we send from here to integer and pass it back to the caller of this function so this one returns the byte array to its caller so let's assume this one so this one converts the byte array to integer and returns back to its caller all right so we are going to return bytes array all right here we are going to return byte array okay so so let's write so i need the, the memory operands here and i need to determine whether it's a string, sorry, no, the string integer byte or uh, etc. etc. So I'm going to use generic type here that is type. Okay, so system.type, the string is a system.type, all right. So that means uh, class names and any type, array types, value types, enumeration types, all right. So this uh, we can catch uh, the second variable so whether it's a string string whether it's a int or whatever from this one all right so now i'm going to use a final point i i must get the final pointer all right so the pointer that we are going to read okay my final point will be find real memory address location for that is memop all right so i declare the this one as null all right now with the type variable i'm going to allocate the buffer according right so so i'm going to use type type of float the uh, if this is a float type okay I'm going to allocate sorry. so this is float I'm going to use change the buffer size accordingly So, can we use this? Oh, I don't think so because now we can. So, this will be our 
float right finally I'm going to allocate the buffer as buffer with the buff this uh, buffer size okay now I have e the buffer now I'm going to use the read process memory function all right read process memory I have the p handle base address I have the final pointer here okay so buffer now we are going to pull push the buffer here okay the buffer size is the buffer size now here this one is most important all right now look at this so if total read so this total read is so this is same as the buffer size if this is same as the buffer size then we are going to return the buffer all right that means we have read everything we have read the value we have a success else that means we have something wrong some error occurred. Uh, most of the time we try to read from the null pointer okay we try to read from the null pointer then we are going to return null all right now this method is completed now let's fill the other reading functions all right okay so here I'm going to you get the buffer okay right so here I'm going to use all right now if there is a problem now let's copy seems we have still we have problem oops okay I'm going to copy like this so this is going to be double now this is now this is byte so since we are using a single byte we can use simply return zero all right now okay final one int so this will be int 32 because it's a 32 bit each here so I think everything now under control here all right so now as i mentioned earlier we should check whether this pointer is null or not all right so uh let's nullify this so if we check so earlier you may be wondering what is this button is so this is to nullify this point <laughs> right okay now if we try to write this we may get exception you know, we may not all right so anyway let's see nothing happens here all right so so we you can see unable to write to process memory all right so the number of byte written is going to be zero all right now this is not a bit best practice we just writing everything regardless of checking whether this point is actually exist or not so therefore we must check whether this pointer is actually a pointer it's not a null point all right therefore what we are going to do is if c dot read mem as int so since it's int 
So I'm just let's use this. So this is uh, I'm going to move the memory operand to here. Okay. Okay. So this will be my memory operand. So This is not null. All right. Oops. Then I'm simply write this. Otherwise, I'm not. Let's see. So here my memory operand. Okay, I I have this breakpoint here. So here, so my type is ind32. Okay. So I have this here. So here I'm going to read. Now here, since this point is null, I don't have anything. So I simply return null. Oh, everything now is going to be null. So I skip and release this. All right. Now let's open this program once again. Okay. And let's see that time what ha actually happens. All right. So I'm going to do this basic same thing here. I didn't change anything. So okay. So I have the handles and everything. Okay. So my fine final pointer is set now. So let me in cheat engine let me reopen this process oops not cheat engine itself okay clear seal on it all right now i have this pointer here all right now it's the reading pass okay now let you see it read successfully all right here it's read now i'm going to return the buffer here okay now this is no problem. I'm going to convert. So let's see what's the value we get. It should be zero. Let's watch here. Let's have to watch number one. Actually, it's zero. Let's remove the hexadecimal one. Okay. Let's refresh. Okay, it's zero. Now, since it's not null, I'm going to write 99 let's see all right i'm going to remove these breakpoints here you see now the value is 99 now let's see okay i just pushed f11 here okay you see we have the 99 right now we have this assume that you used a while loop here okay so this while so most of the train trainers like works like this so here so so i'm just going to thread sleep this one millisecond sleep here i'm going to in, import system dot threading okay i must use capital s <laughs> All right, now assume now your trainers running like this. Okay, this is your basic trainer for this memory location. So if you try to increase these, everything working, so you cannot increase the loop pointer or the other pointers. That is because we locked. But if you null it, your program won't crash. So there will be no printing here, unable to write process memory. So, so that's how you check for null pointers and writing to memory addresses. So that's it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed. This is also a lengthy video and this is, this also contains most of the geeky stuff. All right. But I, I, I think you enjoyed it, right? If you don't understand any single thing here, just uh, put it, put the, put your concerns or your questions in the comment section, and I will answer each and every comment that you have or each and every question you have, and 
from that you can get the idea all right so as i said earlier i want you to get this very clear all right i want to get this every single thing so today's video may be bit advanced all right so that's why if you have questions please write it in the comment section so if you want me to explain uh, something that's also right under the comment section i will explain uh, with you so we can you can ask questions we can do some interactive session so uh, you can you ask questions so i post uh, the answer so if that's again a question you write that question again all right so with that being said uh, i thank you very much for staying with me and watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel that is fun tech with hashan and click the bell icon so you will be notified when i uploaded a new video so with that being said uh, thanks for watching and thank you very much stay safe